Hi, my name is Simon, GM8NYB. I'm continuing on with my restoration of the CO100. This is all that's left of it really. This is basically the chassis with the tuning capacitor on it, which I need to remove. It still has a scale on it. Apart from the sockets, the valves, everything else has been removed from underneath. Uh, the wave change switch is still here. Well, the mechanism for it. It's quite late, light now. Anyway, so this video, I'm going to try and remove this uh, variable capacitor. Uh, it seems a shame to take all these pulley wheels off. But I need to remove this this scale. It's quite discoloured, and I'd like to replace it. Now, there's a good write-up on how to do this on a website called the Vintage Radio Net, and the guy goes under the name of Top Cap has a good description of how he set it up and the procedure of marking the scale. It seems to me that when they were tuned up, they used the IF frequency that was set on the crystal as the center. Uh, in my case, it's going to be 465.52. Once they've lined up the IF, they then did the tuning uh, as close as they could do it. Now, they might not match these, but they marked these. They had a, a blank scale and they marked it roughly. <laughs> so basically they wrote the scale to meet the tuning. All right, last time I took all the IFT cans off and I soaked them. I remit this is one of the cases. I soaked it in to give it a clean up because they were quite dirty. I soaked it in the soapy water with a little bit of bleach. I left it to soak. And surprise, surprise, I don't know if you remember, they, they were a very greeny sort of gray. And all that paint, it looked like it had been repainted because it had like brush marks on it and drip marks. And I, I started brushing it with a, a toothbrush after it soaked for a while and all that paint came off. And this is what's left. Now it's not completely, it's gone back to their metal in places. And I had a look around somewhere, said somebody, or I read somewhere that the paint is very close to a Ford gray, whatever that means. I need to look online to see if we can find a paint uh, to match. The other ones are very similar. The paint was coming off, but uh, a lot of the underside, undercoating paint here has also come off. So I may just rub that down to the bare metal and respray it. So that's what, and then the other thing I noticed, this is the heater link. It says heater link. I'm going to read it. Heater link. It's um, split. It's made of plastic or some form of plastic. These screw out little pins and inside the metal bar pushed in there. Now it's split there. It's very hard to get these tight in. So this may cause problems when they come to reassemble it. What I thought I'd do, I've got this stuff here. It's called Millipot. Uh, it's a two part epoxy and it sets really, really hard. I've used it for making tuning coils for, um, for ma uh, antenna matching units. This is a piece of leftover made into like a little dice, a cube. And it's very hard, it sits very hard. I start to try and drill it there. So I might manage to mold this into this, into a shape of this. Drill it, tap it and make another one. I could try and glue this together, but it might be... Uh, a worthwhile effort to try and make a new one right so so far I've got most of the cables off the tuning capacitor here and, and also need some light it wasn't exactly easy the main problem I've got most of them off was these little strips here the earth and the earth to metal tags that are just pushed out of the base here I need a lot of heat to get those off and uh, so i've set the the hardest i got on the solder line here is uh, 450 degrees and eventually i managed to unsolder them and i've got one more to go so hopefully solder lines up to temperature i had to use a little piece of solder also to uh, just to get the Heat to flow really, so just a little bit there. 
attempt to get this off. These also had like a rubber insulation on them. Off there. That was the center of the coax, went to the and the state of the capacitor, and hopefully, enough heat. I started doing this one before, enough heat to get this off. That's a good bit of heating where this goes. So it can be done with a 450 degrees. Now, I noticed on this, I've got another one here which is probably. Better. Um, yes. These are the top caps of the valves, and they went to the capacitors. That's the earth side. Oops. Now this is invisible. That's like a little coil of wire around it, like a strain gauge at the end. So it's almost like a little spring. And it's sold on to the end, so I, I think it's the center wrap back around on itself. Give it a bit of a strain relief. Now, this had the rubber insulation over the top of it, so it's quite uh, so I never noticed that until I removed them. Okay, let me turn this all line off now. Then, I, there's a few screws on here, two at the back. I have to look around. One on the top side here, and another one inside the gear train. Typical. But what I want to do first is to remove. It doesn't stay up right now. What I want to do now is to uh, position that somewhere. Let's see. The cord. Now the best way of doing it, instead of just cutting the cord, there's a knot, there's a hole here, and then both ends have gone in there, and a little knot. So I thought I might be able to just cut that out. Not sure if it's going to work. That's it. Shame to cut the cord, but uh, it'll have to be done to clean it properly. And I'm sure with a bit of patience, we'll get it back on again when the time comes. So that thing comes out of here. I'm going to keep this for the length of it. Now I've taken one screw out of this um, the holder here. So this will take the other one out. Okay. There's the third one. Keep this out of the way, keep it safe. I've taken loads of pictures before I started this, by the way. Right, now then, let's see if it's possible to... Uh, let's get the button off first. Now this, I'll loosen these prior to this. This is quite stiff. The self-tappers. I've got all the earth off, I think. Uh, I think there's still one there. Okay. Still got an earth attached. Uh, again, it's going to be a lot of heat needed. Try and remove this. I think once I get through the, the dust and the dirt and the oxidation, it comes off quite easily. Yeah. But you do need a lot of heat on it. Pasting out. That's it. Oh, it's off. Yeah, the little logs are there. Uh, just part of the chassis. Right. So that's another job to do. Continue with these. Keep the screws safe. Now, 
perhaps it feels loose now. Now the most awkward one. I'll turn it around here. It would be in there, wouldn't it? Now, the only one screwdriver I can get in is this big one. And with the help of a torch. Should. Put the nail here. Yes, coming out okay. That's quite loose. later. <sighs> See how that goes with the pick up. Yeah, still, ah, still another one. Is it? So it seems to be holding it. <laughs> one more. There's always one more. Back on with the soft line. Right, so it looks like it's going to come free as it is. Let's just put a hand here. Let's get this temperature back up. Uh, yes, this one here, so I missed that one. And that looks. It might help Let's speed up with scrape all the tarnish of it. Nice. Since you use more solder on soldering of the, the thing, then probably bring it back up. Once you get the heat in, it's not too bad. that each segment of the capacitor there is the squazonic lath. Of course the capacitor came up from the bottom here from the coil pack. This here had the aerial trimmer on it so the aerial was fed in um, on the on the state of the right, this should easily come off. Oh, it's come off a lot easier than I expected. Right. Well, there we have it. That's the chassis. Very lightweight now. Um, I have to have a think of what to do with that. Still got to get this out. It's just about taking that screw off. There's an extra nut in here as well. I think it's going to stop the whole lot rotating. So that's an easy thing to remove. Let's put that flat down here. And let's have a look at the capacitor. Right. Now then. A uh, couple of screws on here. I think they're quarter. I checked before. Yeah. So the scale will come off here. Inch. I'm not sure how the scale comes apart, but I've read a lot about restoring these on various websites. I shall put a link to the one I'm talking about, the, the vintage radio net. It's quite interesting. There we go. So that's the right hand side. I remember that. And that. Aha, the old shaft comes through here. Yeah, so come out. Aha. So basically, Cardboard roll. Just cardboard. And uh, I'm not sure. It may have been varnished or covered. That's a scale, different ranges. And I believe when they set them up, once they've got the IF aligned, they get a rough idea. They, they have a, a a graticule on here, then mark a, like a dummy one, and then mark roughly the positions. Take it off once it's tuned up, and then print it to fit. So that's it. Pidge, I had to cut the other end to get that off, but um, I'll get new cord for it. There's a good diagram in the manual on how to rethread this. That'll be fun and games. This also has a uh, cord on it so that's it so I'm going to give this a clean up gearbox fairly clean a bit greasy I don't feel much backlash in it really I think you've got anti-backlash gears in here now on reading about these things people have always say don't worry we do 
don't split them the plaster off this or don't take this apart as it's a nightmare to put back together unless of course you need to I also see lots of minute little ball bearings in here so I think the best thing is just to clean the whole thing as a one piece I'll probably take the bar off and take the front off so that's it for now that's basically it uh, completely stripped down done it over a few weeks yeah I suppose if you did it full time you'd probably do it a lot quicker I'm just doing it a little bit in the evening a few weekends in between uh, I like to give this a good clean up see how it uh, pans out don't know whether to take the the holders off yet and spray it up and then put them back on just that the riveted on and I suppose the best way of doing it would be pot rivets but I don't think pot rivets is be as nice as the original so I'll see how that goes I've still got the coil pack that needs to be completely cleaned up and I've still got a few capacitors that I need to order a few capacitors I need to order to finish those tag strips and a few uh, few micas so a few mica capacitors I need to order the micas on here are probably okay I think they're uh, tested okay but they're wax and if I can source new ones, I shall do. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope that was of interest. Another look at the gearbox there. It's quite a complex little thing. Yeah, it's not very easy to see. Maybe better that way. And um, the yeah, slow motion drive, obviously. Yeah. And you've got a scale there, so I'm not sure it's going to work that out. But one rotation. Yeah, it's one rotation, the big dial for one small graticule in the on the inner wheel. And that is it really. I think that will clean up nicely if I soak it. I was gonna drop the whole thing in a, in a little solution again of soapy water. I'll remove the this top bit, I'll remove the this dial. This will come off. But basically I'll just have the gearbox in this. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, went on a bit longer than I thought. I hope it was useful. And until next time, I shall probably start on the coil pack. Not sure yet. We'll see. So, thanks for watching. Click like or subscribe, whatever. And see you next time. Bye bye.